the What the Shuck podcast. Uh, the goal of the What the Shuck podcast is to provide a platform to positive and influential people of Kentucky and Appalachia. And my next guest is the band Wolfpin Branch, and they're going to be joining me here from Frankfort, Kentucky at AMA on the Creek. And uh, this place is absolutely beautiful. They're going to be having a sold out show here later tonight uh, to do for their album release. They just played at the Rolling Tiger last night. Uh, so I just want to thank you all for coming on. Uh, but if you all will introduce yourself and we'll get going. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. I'm Aaron Beaglehauser. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, excited to be here making music and releasing our first record. Jeff Guernsey, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Roddy Puckett, I'm from Winchester, Kentucky, and I like to play bass. <laughs> Chris Shouse, Owsley County, Kentucky. The pride. The pride. Arthur Hancock, I'm from Paris, Kentucky. <laughs> Fellas, uh, thank you all for coming on. Um, kind of walk us through a little bit, and you, anybody can answer this, because there's five people, uh, but just kind of walk us through what the past few years have been like since you all have been assembled as Wolfpin Branch. I think Chris and Arthur should go yeah. They started the band. Uh, right before the pandemic, uh, Arthur and I jammed a little bit and at a Christmas party, so we decided that we would continue playing as a duo, maybe, and started going with that. And uh, eventually, we had a bass player and a banjo player, and then I think that was February of uh, 2020. Yeah, and he called me to play out there. Yeah, so. Uh, on the ridge. First it was called Hancock and Shouse, but then after we added all these awesome guys, we decided to change our band name to Wolfpin Branch because we're a team. It's one of the great things about this band is everybody works so well together. Everyone is really humble. Everyone uh, has this team aspect. that is a really great environment to play music in. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been great. It's just kind of happened organically, and you know, we we've been releasing music here for a little while, but it's great to put it all together and put out a record. Aaron and everyone's done a ton of work to make that happen. We're real excited about it, and it's kind of like you know, I feel the way it's kind of like whoa, uh, it's already 2023, and it kind of happened fast. The last few years seem to be a little bit of a blur. But yeah, here we are. For yeah, so the pandemic really did help us get things together and kind of get our mindset to do a reset, I guess. So during that time, we wrote some music and uh, continued to play, and it gave us some time to, to hone in our craft um, at home. Yeah. Certainly, I think the beginning of the pandemic, all of, no, nobody was playing music, much, much music. And uh, at least three three guys in this band that were kind of fronting their own bands, myself included. But, uh, I guess of all of us left, that one at least I feel, I considered myself. Uh, I felt like I wasn't myself if I wasn't making music. So I was grateful that these guys were in that boat too. Like, well, we can't be ourselves if we're not making music. So let's start playing, and we started playing together not in front of audiences necessarily right away. It grew into... But not long after yeah. that, we started doing those, you know, house concerts that popped up for, fortunately, for people that were craving live music and for us that needed to play it. And, and Lim Limited we, attendance shows and stuff, it was really fun uh -huh. to kind of evolve into a band during that time when it was easy to sell out all the shows because they were all living capacity. Yeah, like <laughs> You're about a thousand. Yeah. Oh, man, we're killing it this year. I think our first 15 shows we sold out. We sold them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, tonight is sold out and it's a big church, so. A little bit bigger. Um, so kind of like, you guys are all exper pretty experienced musicians, obviously, so how did you all actually meet um, with being from different areas of... I guess this region. The bluegrass community is pretty small. And uh, I've known all these guys just from <clears throat> playing music uh, out with other bands that I, were, that I was in. And uh, so you do have a lot of acquaintances by doing that because the circle is small. 
And, you know, we all are supportive of each other when it came to helping other bands out. There were times that we maybe had a possible gig that our actual band couldn't do, so we would get our friends to play. And um, Yeah, a memory popped up on Facebook yesterday of a 23 string band in oh. green, green jeans in oh, yeah. uh, 2011 at Cosmo oh, well, we should 12 years ago. A bill. Yeah. And then, uh, so that's kind of when I first started. When yeah. I met you and hung out with you probably a year or two before that at the Horse Park, or however that started. Yeah. Picking around that time when you were playing a 23 string band. Yeah. The community aspect of Bluegrass music is really cool. So, the Festival of Bluegrass is a great festival. Uh, it is now renamed to Spirit of the Bluegrass. Or in. Spirit in the Bluegrass. Uh, but it's a great chance to go jam in the campgrounds and so you get to meet a lot of people and you get to see your friends that you don't get to see a whole lot and then that circle just kind of keeps growing because we all have a common goal and that common goal is our love for, for music. For sure. Uh, and I guess you mentioned that it's a tight-knit community. It's also sort of incestuous. Like Chris and I played in bands with we had a shared band member that was in both of our bands. And then I ended up working with Roddy and Arthur for a little while in the Wooks. And I've known Chris. Uh, I've known Jeff here for like 20 years. And I always looked up to him and uh, I've always considered him one of my biggest heroes. And uh, I never did think that he would ever want to play in a band. <laughs> but, yeah. So I met these guys. <laughs> ben knows probably better. <laughs> No, Which is uh, really special. No, it's, it is. Yeah, and it's so much more. We, we should say, tip of the cap to Katie Penn. She played fiddle with us for the first first stretch of our of our uh, existence as a band, and she was a big part. She played on three songs on this record, but Jeff stepped in and kicks everybody's butt. He's our knife fighter. Well, uh, everybody in this band, I think, kicks butt simultaneously, is what I think, because these guys. Like a lot of times, and what I really notice is when Chris takes solos, a lot of times I'm chopping rhythm, you know, and I'm looking around and watching these guys, you know, and I'm watching Arthur's right hand a lot of the time, you know, so I'm trying to make sure I'm locked in with that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like everybody is cooking, they're all playing together, you know, and it's pretty awesome. <laughs> that means a lot coming from you, Jeff, for real. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, I and really thankfully through this band and through Aaron, you know, I'd heard of you for the several years, Guernsey, Guernsey this, Guernsey that, and I'd heard some music that you had out there. That, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but anyway, to, to get to know you, to play with you, uh, and then you you wanted to stay with us, play with us, pretty pretty big on. Yeah. Yeah, a compliment, and uh, yeah, I don't know why, but I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> these, these guys are all really good, and they'll all downplay themselves, you know. And so, I don't know where we get this. <laughs> but that's a good thing, you know, because it, I think it keeps everybody like still working, you know. When you get to the point that you feel like you know everything, then you kind of shut down and get lazy, you know. Uh, anyway, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you guys are, uh, uh, I'm an observer, so I, I guess I'm not biased, but I think you guys are all really fucking awesome. So um, I know that uh, the first time I probably saw most of you all play was like a New Year's Eve party at Cosmic Charlie's 2, I think. And on national? Yeah, it was like the Wook, Electric Wooks or yeah. Electric Wooks. Global Honeys or was it Other Brothers? It might have been. We did like two did nights two night night Halloween yeah. thing, right? Awesome. And I was like, holy shit, these guys are really fun to watch. And you all were playing a lot of covers mainly because, I mean, it was like. An electric set. Yeah, but I was like, these guys are probably going to blow people's faces off when they do their own stuff. And truly enough, when I listened to you all, it was, that was true. And as I've got to listen to you all more, too, it's just like. Your band's really good. I'm sure that um, you're really enjoying this experience of you all releasing this album because it has been a few years uh, kind of cooking up, but 
it's really good. You all have 11 songs. Um, I guess only one of those is not technically your all's. Like, two of them. Okay, two. Yeah. Okay. So out of that, it's like all of them are incredible. The ones that you all have done covers of are also incredible because, like, people, I was like listening to this and I was like, I've heard this song before, the Tower Children's one. And I was like, have I heard this before? <laughs> I was like, where have I heard this? <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a cover. Like, this is incredible. Like, and it's just so crazy to hear because bluegrass is so important to our region. And um, being from West Liberty, where I'm from, it's very, very culturally important. And so I think it's so cool that you all are making it so accessible. And the music that you all are making is not only like just bluegrass music, it's stuff that everybody wants to listen to and needs to listen to. So kind of walk us through well, what it's been like to make because I feel like bluegrass is kind of like um like obviously you guys have been around it but it's like it's not what I guess what you call mainstream but you guys are making it like to where everyone's like holy crap this is awesome so kind of walk us through how you all have come to that and making that a, well, a possibility as you said, or what you said about uh, us playing bluegrass music or just music, that's the way I kind of approached this band as, and bluegrass in general, because I came in through it a different way and wasn't necessarily my, I, when I thought of bluegrass music, I thought of, uh, you know, some really out of tune banjos and fiddles. <laughs> Not that that doesn't still happen. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that I think that I think that's a common thing though. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It's out there, you know. Of course there are a lot of people trying to learn and you got it takes a lot of practice to get there and, and, and be precise about those notes and whatnot. But my point is I guess is uh I've always looked at it as just playing good music and uh and I don't necessarily consider us a bluegrass band most a lot of times, you know, even though we play some standards and we have bluegrass instruments. Uh we kind of try to funk it up a lot or just play our, the way we play. Uh, nobody's hindering the way or anybody has a style. It's like, all right, go for it, you know, and then it's like, a lot of you take a lot of risks. To, a lot of people want to define, like, like, <laughs> like, figure out a definition of bluegrass or something and see if we fit within it, but like, easy to lose try, sight of the fact that like, definitions are descriptions of what something is. Now they're not prescriptive. Like we don't decide this is bluegrass, now we work within those rules. Like, sure, some of what we do is bluegrass, you see banjo and fiddle and mandolin, but I mean the way that Arthur approached songwriting on uh, one of the tunes on our record is called Then I'm Gone. And he it's not playing conventional bluegrass guitar style and the groove that's happening with between Roddy and and Chris is not is not you know, typical bluegrass thing, but I'm rolling five string banjo underneath it and <laughs> playing Jeff Shred and fiddle over it, so it kind of works. So I think that it's it sometimes does more harm than good to try to paint yourself into a corner. And there's been a lot of pioneers in, over the years of uh, progressive, progressive bluegrass, if you will, or whatever, you know, going back to bluegrass, newgrass revival. Yep. Uh, and then all the way up to Billy Strings taking over the world, you know, and, and doing the COVID deal. And, uh, but, but shining a light on all that, on the bluegrass, it's good for, for us, you know, and for the music. And we're not just hillbillies, we're hillbillies that can play too. <laughs> but everybody has their own, uh, everybody has their own style in this band. Their songwriting for sure. and their playing and the hour playing mm -hmm. is definitely uh, unique. And I think so many times musicians want to sound like someone else, but then you get to the point like, I just need to sound like myself. Yeah. And then you learn to embrace that. And I think that we've all embraced our individuality that makes collectively Wolfpin Branch, makes our sound. Without Aaron playing banjo, the band would not be Wolfpin Branch. And what was with all these instruments? Including the voices, you know, and the voices as well. But because everyone carries their own weight, it's an easy band to play in as well. You know, everybody's seasoned enough, everybody's worked with other guys before, no, and have fallen in all the pitfalls that you can fall in working with, you know, working with bandmates and 
egos and everything else, and it's like we've all been through enough of that stuff. Yeah. A band name to me is a lot better than so and so and a band name, you know. It's a lot. Um, Jeff Guernsey and Wolf Pin Branch. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's behind that. It's Peach. <laughs> That's when everybody will walk away. <laughs> so, do you all just feel like it's a more united front? by doing that and that's like a really important part of the band as opposed to just being like this is us and then this is our band i think so i mean when when it's a unit instead of you know you know four guys working for one guy then i think everybody approaches it in a different with a different mindset you know um and these guys do work their tails off doing stuff you know um I just come and play the gigs and help carry stuff sometimes, you know. <laughs> carry the rest of us. <laughs> Jeff, can you sing? Yes. yes. I yeah, try. I well, I just, <laughs> I was curious because. Like I was yeah. curious because I've not seen you sing it. Like, I don't know if I've really ever seen you sing with the with Wolf Band. I think he, we got him to sing maybe once or twice, or was that a different configuration? Come down to private gigs, he'll sing some standards and yeah. stuff. He can yeah. sing just as good as any of us or better. So. He does a pretty good Lester Flatt impersonation. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And I might call on him to do a little bit of it right now. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I've been on the opera. <laughs> I'm up for about 67 years now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having more fun working with the Wolf Band Branch. I never did working with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I thought you were trying to figure out how to say something dirty. that wasn't dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you can be dirty, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I say, I, can you say something dirty in Lester Fights voice? Something dirty. <laughs> <laughs> That, that, this is a reflection of the band. Like, we just have a lot of fun, you know? Like, we, we've all, I mean, Jeff has a, a great amount of experience on the road playing big shows. We've all been in situations where we were trying to make it in the music business, you know? And um, I think now it's like, well, we have so much fun just playing in, in general. If we sell out a show, which we did tonight, which is great, or sell tickets or sell CDs or whatever and are able to make a little scratch doing it. That's kind of the, the benefit. That's like an auxiliary benefit to the experience of just playing together and, you know, reflective of like how we haven't had a ton of shows in the last month and we got together to rehearse last week and we were all like, oh, now I know why, I, you know, we do this, you know. Yeah. It was, it There's was a certain good. energy when we get together to play that is, something special for us for us absolutely everybody takes it serious enough but not too seriously you know what i mean because having four people singing in a band you could have some issues with why is my song right well, i've been wanting to talk to you all <laughs> <laughs> it's now a good time <laughs> since we're in the church here well, you know, you know, here we go but it's having greens. fun, you know, it's like <laughs> when we're on stage, I mean, I have a good time. Like, I had a crummy night last night on the first set that we played, you know, and like I couldn't make it happen when I was wanting to. And, but I still had a good time, you know, but like a lot of times when we're playing, our audience is out there and they're out there singing along and dancing and they're having fun, you know. And man, I think that it's, we all feed off each other on stage and then we feed off the crowd and such, you know, it's a back and forth, good, good energy. Yeah, it helps to pay attention to that stuff, you know, and I think that's uh, another key ingredient that we all talk about throughout when we're on the road or whatever. I know I remind myself when I'm on stage, like, <laughs> and I look over at them and make eye contact, like, we're playing music. This is great, you know. And just to remind ourselves that we're able to do this and do it together, it's, a, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And to recognize that, that it is fun. So then, you know, 
Most times, that transfers to the audience. Whoever's listening, you know. And if it doesn't, we're still having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've played some shows where it wasn't necessarily an interactive or energetic crowd, and we're up there just kind of smacking them in the face with it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're just having a good time, you know, so. I think you all definitely have a very contagious product. I know that every show I've ever been to, I've seen people stomping damn hole in the ground. So I think that probably means y'all are doing something right. Um, so with you all just coming out with this album and you're talking about how great chemistry you already have, it's like, I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna be playing together for a minute. Um, so kind of like with with that in mind, like, what, what are some of the goals and visions of what you all are wanting to do with Wolfpin with this 11 album release? I mean, you all, it's going to, I mean, I think it's going to make some some waves for sure. I'm sure you all feel the same way, especially with how you're all talking. I but I don't think any of us are trying to take over the world and, and become rich. I mean, we're taking a vow. Any of us that don't have day jobs now is sort of taking a vow of poverty, and we're cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> See beans and rice, you know, but uh, but but we do want to play and be relevant in our field, you know, whether it be nationally or regionally or whatever. But like, we want to contribute something to the catalog of the music that we play, you know, and, and you know, just be something relevant. We don't know, none of us are too concerned about being popular or playing 200 shows a year or anything like that. We're solidly a regional band right now but we get to branch out and go play in Colorado and New York and the Carolinas and all around Kentucky all the, all the states that border Kentucky but, uh, I don't know I think our main goal is just to continue to play music and release music and record yeah that's the main thing is just to continue playing and if we stay status quo that's fine if we get bigger that's fine if we don't get it's, it's, it doesn't we're our goal is just to continue to play and that's reflective of the pandemic where the show was removed like the performance was removed from it yeah. and we just received so much from just the act of playing together in general but i will say it's interesting we've had nine songs out or ten, eight, uh, yeah, eight eight either. so eight of the songs on the record have been out mm -hmm. but in the last 36 hours i've heard more from people about how great you know, it's great to hear that from your friends, but they're like, oh, I love the record. It's like, hadn't you heard most of it? As a collection, though, it makes more sense. It makes more sense. Yeah, you know, good. it flows, and, and it's really cool. And I think, you know, the art of the CD and the and the vinyl still is there. And um, I know a lot of friends of mine that pop CDs in their truck, and they live in that CD player for a while. And, you know, the repetitious listening that comes from that, it feeds into the... Yeah, that and the... The, the order of the songs too sometimes yeah. it feels it felt so different to me to listen to the first song on the record is like the last song that we recorded basically and like and then there's they're sprinkled <laughs> in there in a way that makes sense to us but like you know three or four songs in is the first single that we ever released you know well over a year ago and then i don't know did you if there's something about the continuity of, of, of the collection of them does contribute more to the listening experience but, yeah but it also is good to have those singles out like we've already had some traction like uh, our first single don't have a clue that chris wrote um, one week showed up on this uh, grass Econa chart from bluegrass today that it's like it's a number it was number one for a week one week <laughs> yeah but, uh, number one song we had up so we, the, the good thing about sprinkling those singles out of them kind of made some traction and like the truck got the attention of some of the radio DJs and, and stuff, syndicated DJs and satellite radio people and everybody else like along the way. So maybe we've already got a little bit of their uh, attention when the record comes out, hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, it's Saturday, so it came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see how the next few weeks go. But like burning the midnight oil was number four, right? Yeah, it was. It was on it was that's, that's good on yeah. straight up international yeah. bluegrass chart to reach number four in the world as just us. That's pretty <laughs> epic. I mean, that's that would be pretty exciting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, we get in the top ten at the end here with the new one. I hope so. Yeah. Let's see. 
see, we had a whole bunch of fun making the record, so I hope people have at least a proportional amount of fun listening to it. Mm -hmm. If you all are ever like looking at the metrics, I'm like, you all clearly said you all don't. You're like cool if people do, but I don't really give a shit. Ultimately, listen or don't, we're having fun. That's really all that matters. But um, if y'all are ever like, man, there's just one YouTube user, YouTube Music. That's me, because like that's just I have YouTube Music. I because I post on my YouTube or all my podcast stuff on there, and it's just like a really seamless interface for that. And I'll always tell people where I like post stuff and be like go listen to this song people are like what the fuck are you listening to this shit on like because everyone's like i'm team spotify or i'm team apple music yeah. and i'm just like yeah they're like what is this are you like i don't know this third world <laughs> bullshit you're listening to this on and i'm like I'm well sorry, that's man. the beauty of it you can get it everywhere i mean yeah. that's, that's great it's 399 <laughs> <laughs> what's well, the other fun thing about like this crowd here tonight i'm guarantee you bunches and bunches of people will buy cd copies of both of these records and well and t-shirts and everything else and it's like it means a lot to us that you, we know that you can go on any of your phones and listen to this music and not pay much more than a few pennies yeah. to listen to our music but yet you, they're still going to support us by purchasing, yeah, I, I purchasing our they, merchandise and making it i think they obviously they definitely want to support us but there's a lot of people myself included still enjoy to have a physical copy of stuff and have mm -hmm. a cd player in my truck that works yeah. True. <laughs> yeah, of course, Do they even put CD players in cars anymore? No, like no, for real? I don't think so. I, think so. I, I have a rental right now, and I'm thinking, I'm like, does it have a yeah, CD I player? Know. I don't know. I have a <laughs> thumb drive. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it has like a full computer, but no CD player. It's like, this. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. <laughs> um, I know laid back. Country Dicker was like releasing his on like a a track, a track. and I'm like, oh my god, yeah. like he's such a savage, dude. He's just savage. And then I just bought one. <laughs> Scratch out the lyrics on stone tablets or something. <laughs> <laughs> so we should start doing the bootleg ones where you put like the, the paper tape on the cassette tape. Yeah. The top hey, right. Right. Oh yeah, like those yeah, great dead, dead bootlegs. Yeah. 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 Oliver said, so someone was like, I'm going to donate some money, man. You can save that to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that's also something that's definitely not in a car anymore. But uh, so you guys have, a, I'm sure you guys have a pretty busy, busy schedule. What's some stuff you are kind of looking forward to as far as shows? I Chris know. mentioned Spirit of the Bluegrass, and that's an exciting one we're going to be doing. There's some other shows that are, are announcing announced. tonight, or they're, they're, they're going to be announcing soon. So yes. Yeah. Uh, but we got some exciting festivals and stuff we're playing. For. We're, I mean, we're working on some runs in the region. We haven't announced anything yet. Uh, we're going to branch out a little bit, go play some club dates. And, you know, the other thing, too, is like tonight we're having our – we didn't play Lexington. Typically we would play at the Borough for like a record release. But mm -hmm. we're in Frankfurt. We're in a church. Thanks to the Mueller's, my friends that are having us. Um, it's sold out, but like – through myself at least like through promoting shows like i like to own the show it's fun to so we're probably going to do more stuff like this you know I play some barn parties or yeah. you know local stuff like that and we got a even our sound man too yeah and seth, seth murphy's <laughs> running sound <laughs> so. even our show in louisville last night it was like we were kind of producing the show ourselves and we had mm -hmm. help from the venue for sure but it was not it didn't feel like um there was so much pressure I don't know, it feels good to be yeah. able to put, on, put together a show sort of start to finish it. Mm -hmm. Make it all work. So we'll do more of that. I know I personally don't have a lot of experience with putting shows together. I've done a, a lot of like benefit shows, like nothing huge, but like I did a show with the bro myself and I was like, it seemed more constrictive. Like I, <laughs> like I could see how you would want to be like, I'm do my own show at this bar and like this is the time frame there's no one like telling me what i gotta do or like that stuff's kind of stressful when you're trying to just be creative and have fun i'm sure so i'm and i'm just doing like podcast stuff so i can't even imagine like oh yeah there's a lot of stuff you gotta go through Thank yeah you. 
<laughs> but it's also it's also good to experience music in different ways. Mm -hmm. When you're at the borough or the bar listening to the music and people are drinking beer and they're having conversations, you know, they're dancing versus this venue where they're gonna be sitting down, there's no drinks, food allowed in here. So it's gonna be more like a listening crowd. So mm -hmm. that's gonna be a different kind of experience for the listener. So I think that's another way to experience. I mean, watching us at the borough or at an outside festival or in here is going to be a different experience. Well, Jeff's going to do some preaching in here later on. <laughs> He's going to sinners. Hell of fire and damnation. The I'm sinners are here. here. I'm going to lay it down. <laughs> I, don't I don't need that. <laughs> Well, fellas, um, I don't want to keep you all too long. It looks like you all got some more people showing up. So. Yeah, we got uh, another sound, little sound check. check. Yeah, I'll get off of the stage and out of your all's hair. But I appreciate you all so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. Just kind of give everyone a rundown of some info on the album where people can be seeing you all soon. Wolfpinbranch.com. We're on all the socials except for some of them, but we're on Instagram. Except for some of them? You like that? Um, we're not all of them except for some of them, except for some of them. We're not modern, but we're on Instagram, Facebook. Find us there, message us if you like what you're hearing. Tell us, you know, we love to hear from people. Um, and just keep your eyes peeled on those dates as we start posting them. And, you know, we, we enjoy hearing from folks, so. We also have an online store that okay. you can purchase CDs. Uh, these Ask hands, we'll put those in mailers <laughs> for you. T-shirts. Stickers and all that stuff means a lot. It helps. It helps us record more music. That's really how we invest with the band is investing in further recordings, and that's our goal for the rest of the year. Yeah, keep making studios too. Yeah, we appreciate you. I appreciate you all, man. Keep making awesome music. I have a feeling that you guys are going to be pretty busy, so I'm glad you all gave me a chance. So, thank you all, and kick ass tonight. Cheers, <laughs> guys. Yeah. What's up, everybody? I am Austin Shook, the host of the What the Shook podcast and also the president of Appalachian Pioneer Program. I am coming to you all from the Germantown Art Gallery in Germantown, Kentucky. They are a Airbnb plus on Airbnb, so it is going to be an Airbnb that reaches all of the standards that you want from essentially what you, the amenities you would get at a hotel, but that you'll have at a home. And I had the chance to meet some people who have a property here and we're, we're working on a really cool thing that, um, so essentially if you come here and you say hashtag shuck in the bill, um, you will be giving a 10% discount to stay at this property and they're gonna be donating 10% um, of their earnings quarterly to Appalachian Pioneer Program. So we'll be making an annual contribution at the end of each year to uh, my nonprofit. We're really excited about that. Thank you all so much. I hope you all are having an absolutely great day and I hope you kill it. 2023. Let's live the dream. Woo!